Hey everybody, this is Connor, uh, Boats Don't Sink, here uh, with some Bunny Girl Senpai again. Uh, today I've got some uh, deck list for you guys to hopefully show off some of the uh, different builds in the set. Uh, the set's really interesting in that um, pretty much every combo in the set can work with any of the other combos. Uh, none of them are really locked into packages um, that they have to be run together, uh, like a lot of other sets. Um, some big ones, notably lately, like, well, the set that comes out next month, uh, Heaven's Fuel really pushes a deck where you run eight treasures. Um, Bang Dream recently uh, has pushed sort of the bands to be together. Uh, so you, you don't really have a ton of uh, sort of moving room where you can play a bunch of different combos together. Uh, so uh, this set is sort of sort of unique in that aspect, um, since a lot of the sets we've gotten have been more directed lately. Uh, so here we go. Uh, sample deck lists. My first one is the uh, Nodoka level 1 combo. Uh, so this is going to be probably the most uh, like traditional looking deck uh, out of the three. Uh, it's just more of plussing level 0s into uninteractive level 1 into early plays into finisher, right? It's just the, the standard formula. Uh, so at zero, we have the runners. Uh, it's just a mill runner. Uh, it gains a thousand during your own turn, so it attacks at 3k. Uh, we have the uh, two of, two copies of the Sakuta zero. This gives your other uh, middle position and center stage plus 1500. Uh, so it's big for mostly power pumping um, just our characters at level one, uh, since most of them aren't huge and we don't have great ways to boost their power. Uh, just makes them a little bigger. Uh, it can make our early plays a bit more respectable on defense. Uh, stuff like that. Uh, so then we have uh, his other effect. When he direct attacks, he can give a character a soul. Uh, so he's also good for pushing damage earlier in the game. Um, and if you ever win a lane at some point, you can slap him down and get some extra soul in there. Uh, next we have two copies of the Phantom Elder Sister Shoko. Uh, so it's on play, mill 2, if there's a climax, you give a character 1500, and then it's a drop search. Uh, so we're just playing this for a little extra consistency in drop search, and a little bit of extra mill. Uh, notably, this deck does have a ton of good milling options. Um, so this just sort of helps us keep things churning through the deck, uh, and getting the pieces we need. Next we have four copies of Bunny Girl Senpai, uh, My Sakura Jima. Uh, so this card, when it becomes reversed, you reveal up to three cards in the top of your deck. If you reveal any number of cards, you choose an adolescence character, uh, put it into your hand, and then discard a card, and put the rest into your waiting room. Uh, so this is just a little more mill, a little hand filter. Um, and we're also playing it partially for its second effect. Uh, whenever this card is put into your waiting room from the stage, you can choose one copy of Irreplaceable Existence My Sakura Jima from your waiting room, and put it into your memory. Uh, so that's going to be the level 3 uh, Mai that we're running 4 copies of. Uh, this lets us put one in memory, uh, which we can do stuff with at level 2. Uh, you're probably not going to be wanting to put like multiple Mai's in there, um, but this helps us get one in there early uh, so that we can start uh, early playing it and stuff like that. Next we have 3 copies of the Shoko Brainstorm. Uh, so this is just when you play a Climax, give a character a level in 500, and then it's a pay 1 self-rest search Brainstorm. Uh, so it's just good brainstorm. We don't need four of it, because um, we do have a lot of ways to grab cards. So we're just playing three, because uh, you're usually just sitting one in your back row and using that. Uh, next we have two copies of the um, trial deck, uh, My Sakura Jima level zero. Uh, so this is when it goes from stage to waiting room. Uh, you can pay one and put the top card of your deck into your clock, look at up to three cards in the top of your deck, choose a character, reveal it, put it in hand. Um, so this is, again, just more mill, more digging, uh, helping us find our pieces. And it's our other plussing zero uh, alongside the runners um, to help us build card advantage. And the last level zero, we have two copies of the uh, promo, Summertime Memories. Uh, so this is on play. You can put one adolescence character from your hand into your clock, and then check top three and add anything uh, without revealing it, and put the rest into your waiting room. Uh, so this is um, sort of the same role uh, as the Trial Deck Mai, uh, where we're just digging for more cards and getting some mill. Uh, this one is not a plus, uh, like the Mai is, but it can get us our climaxes, so it makes our level 1 combo a little more consistent as well. 
uh, and our level 3 combo, because we don't have a ton of uh, ways to dig for climaxes in this deck besides drawing them. At level 1, we have 4 copies of the um, Nodoka that actually looks like a Mai, but it's Nodoka. Um, so this is on attack. Uh, if the return climax is in your hand, or not in your hand, I'm sorry, in your climax area, uh, you can uh, check top 4 if you have another adolescence character. So this is Yukina combo. Uh, you can look it up to 4, choose an adolescence character, reveal it, put it in hand, put the rest into your waiting room. Uh, so this is just tons of mill, uh, helping us hit refresh timing pretty well. Um, hopefully refreshing with gl good clock compression at level 1. Uh, and it pluses. Unfortunately it's a little small. It's only 4k, doesn't gain power. So it's 5k with climax. But we have... You know, the Sakuta that can pump middle uh, position 1500, um, and we have a Nodoka that can pump some power as well. Uh, so then we have the other effect on it is whenever it is frontal attacked, you can pay one and put it into your waiting room to choose uh, the runaway Nodoka Toyama from your, uh, Toyohama from your hand and uh, put it on the stage position that this card was on as the defending character. Uh, and that's going to be the red 2 1 10,000 um, that we'll get to in a second. Uh, notably, you can use this effect even if you don't have the Nodoka in hand. Um, so if your opponent attacks you with like an Aaron combo or something and you really don't want them to get it, you can just pay one and sack her off and not play anything. And just deny their reverse combo for one stock. Which is pretty reasonable. Uh, next we have a Talented Individual, uh, My Sakura Jima. So this is just when Battle Opponent becomes reversed, uh, you put this into your memory. And then at the beginning of your next draw phase, you choose one copy of her from memory and put it on any position of your stage. Uh, so this is just another plusing card. Uh, whenever it gets a kill, it runs away and can't be killed until your next turn. So you have a free attacker next turn, basically. Uh, we're playing three of those just to keep maintaining hand size um, and have characters to attack with, really. Uh, so next we have two copies of the Sisterly Thoughts, Nodoka Toyohama. Uh, so this is during your turn, all of your characters with Mai or Nodoka, which thankfully is most of the things we'll ever be attacking with, um, get plus a thousand power. And then it also has pay to and rest itself to choose a Mai or Nodoka in your waiting room and return it to your hand. Um, so this can help us, uh, if we have enough stock sitting around extra, it can help us get some of our like one ofs, um, or just grab more cards that we need, grab our combo back or whatever. Uh, moving on to level two. Uh, we have the 2-1 uh, anti-change counter, uh, so this is just a 2500 backup, and when you use the backup you can discard 2 uh, to choose one of your opponent's characters with a higher level than your opponent and put it into their waiting room. Uh, so we're just playing 1, we don't have a ton of like good setups that enable this in the deck. Um, we do have a fair number of early plays on our own, um, but we don't really have anything that's like walling out the opponent. so. Uh, we're just playing the one. We can get it with the Nodoka level one that can pay two and salvage it. Um, we can get it off our combo. We have tons of ways to search it. So uh, Next we have two copies of Rascal Sakuta Azusagawa. Uh, so this has a bunch of text on it. Uh, the first one is, if your level is two or higher, it gains the following ability. Pay two, put one adolescence character from your hand into your waiting room, and rest one of your uh, two of your adolescence characters. Uh, you get to choose one irreplaceable existence, My Sakura Jima, which again is the 3-2 that we're playing four of, uh, from your memory and put it onto any position of your stage. Uh, and then during your turn, all of your other Sunset Sky My Sakura Jima and irreplaceable existence, My Sakura Jima, get plus a thousand power. So that's the red 3-2 and the, uh, the yellow 3-2 Mai that we're playing one of, uh, both gain a thousand power. And, uh, last effect, is assist all of your characters in front of this card, get plus X power, where X is 500 times that character's level. Uh, so he's a level assist. Um, so we're making our early plays reasonably big. Uh, we're getting to early play the Mai. Um, and it's it's recurrable, so pretty good. And, like, pay two, ditch one, rest two is basically the same as just, like, hard playing the character, but you also have to rest two, so... You can't, like, spam it a whole bunch. Uh, and then we have the 2-1 uh, Runaway Nodoka Toyohama. Uh, so it's a 10k, it cannot side attack. And at the beginning of your encore step, if it is on your center stage, uh, you return it to your hand, 
and then choose up to one level zero or lower character in your hand and put it on its stage position as rest. Um, so notably this is your encore step, so what'll happen with the level one combo is if they frontal attack and you pay one, sack it, play the Nodoka, uh, it'll live through your opponent's encore step and you'll get to attack with it again, uh, and then it'll return to your hand. Um, which is cool if you can like chain the level one combo because then it returns to your hand and you can uh, trap change in a different lane uh, on the next turn. Uh, then we have um, moving into level threes, uh, one copy of the Sunset Sky My Sakura Jima. Uh, so this is uh, on attack. If you have four or more other adolescence characters, you choose one of your characters and that character gets plus a thousand power and plus one soul until end of turn. Uh, and then... Um, once per turn, during the turn that it's placed on stage from hand, if its damage is cancelled, you'll deal one. Uh, so we're running this kind of as a uh, secondary finisher uh, for the cancel burn effect. Uh, but the plus a thousand and plus one soul is actually really good damage manipulation in this deck. Uh, that has a lot of uses. Uh, a, it can just give it to itself to have more soul, uh, since it has cancel burn anyway. It's not really much of a downside there. Uh, but B, our my combo is three soul base at level three meaning it's four soul with the combo. Um, so using this effect, we can actually pump it up to five, which seems terrible. Uh, four is already a little big, but what that allows us to do is now instead of like siding into a level three for one damage, we can side into a level three for two damage, uh, which is a much more reasonable number than one, uh, and honestly even a better number than four, really. Uh, so this can turn our frontals for four or sides for one into sides for two, um, which can in make our numbers a lot better. Uh, and, obviously, you can just put it into whatever if you have, like, good side attacks over level 1s or anything like that. Or if you just have a, like, random level 0 on board and want to pump it to 2 soul base. <laughs> uh, then we have three copies of Sunset Sky Kaede Azuzagawa. Uh, so this one is going to be uh, early play if you have four more adolescence characters. Um, on play, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's level 1 or lower, uh, put it into your stock. Uh, put the card you revealed into your stock, and then on play it heals. Uh, so we're playing three of these. Uh, ideally, we're just jamming one of them at level two because it's super easy condition. Uh, the level assist makes it a 10k at least, which isn't amazing, but it's better than nothing. Uh, and hopefully we're getting it out for one stock. We're playing a fair number of level zeros and ones in the deck, and it hits on climaxes as well. Um, the cool thing we can do is we can like uh, use the Sakuta, uh, to pay two, pitch one, rest two, summon the Mai from memory to put us at four characters, and then play the Kaede. So we get like double early play strategies going on. Um, it's a little, I mean, it's three stock if you hit the top check. It's a little less efficient than most decks double early plays, but I think you also get a lot more out of it with how strong the Mai is. Uh, so the Mai, uh, the level three is three soul, as I said. Um, on play, you put the, on play from hand or from memory, notably. Uh, you put the top two cards of your deck into your waiting room and deal X damage to your opponent, where X is the number of level two or higher cards you mill. Uh, in this deck, unfortunately, that's not a ton. Um, but it is what it is. <laughs> we have, uh, what, 5, 13, 14. We have 14 hits. Um, so if you're milling two, you're not incredibly favored, but it's free damage when it hits, so... Um, we're mainly just playing this to push the combo and early playing to get three soul beaters at level two lets us push a lot of damage on its own, um, which is just, you know, it's, it's strong. We're keeping up the damage race even if we don't mill, uh, and if we do mill, we're probably pulling ahead pretty far. Uh, climax combo is on attack, you deal one, uh, and then the last uh, effect is when this card is frontal attacked, put this card into your memory, mandatory. Uh, so that just sends it back to memory so we can play it again next turn, get another shot at the mill. Uh, unfortunately, it's pretty hard to keep the Mai around, so you're, you're probably having to pay two stock for it every time you want to bring it out. Uh, so it does get expensive in the long run, but hopefully we're just playing it once at level two, and then transitioning into level three where we can go off with it. Uh, the last card, we're playing one copy of the trial deck level three Mai, uh, just because there are not many level threes uh, in this set that dig for um, cards like on play. There's not, there's not many cantrips, and most of them that do cantrip are like very small numbers that they can look at. Uh, so this one is uh, on play. 
from hand. Uh, you look at the top X cards of your deck uh, and put one into your hand, put the rest into your waiting room, where X is the number of adolescence characters you have. Uh, so we're mainly using this to dig for the climax for the my combo at level 3. Uh, but its other effect is when battle opponent becomes reversed, pay 2, discard 2, deal 5. Uh, which is, again, it's another secondary finisher. 5's not great. Uh, but if we're playing it for the top check anyway, it's at least another piece of text that's not irrelevant. Uh, and then we have the four returns and four comebacks in the deck. So as I said, this is probably the most tip, like standard um, formula deck. We're just playing good zeros into an interactive level one combo early play finishers. These other two are going to be a little different. Uh, first, we have the Koga combo deck. Uh, so this deck, you will already see a bunch of like random one ofs and stuff. Um, this deck's entire strategy uh, is based around on play effects and recurring them multiple times. So you'll see first we have four copies of the Shoko Drop Searcher this time instead of just two. Um, this card's a lot better when you get to play it over and over and over again at less cost. Um, so again, it's just mill on play and drop search on play. Um, so it's, it's our main source of hand filtering in the deck. Uh, we have two copies of Lapsless's Demon, Tomoe Koga. So this is on play, look at the top two, put them back in any order. Uh, and on attack, choose one of your adolescence characters and give it plus 1500. Uh, so we're using this to pump our level one combo quite often. Uh, next we have one copy of the Trial Deck Level Zero Shoko. Uh, so this is on play, you choose one of your characters and give it plus 1500 power. Um, and on attack, you reveal top card of your deck. If it's Adolescence character, you put it in your hand, discard one. So more hand filter for us on play, uh, and on or more hand filter for us uh, when it attacks, and on play uh, we get to pump our characters. Um, so it's just more utility. Three copies of Shoko Brainstorm once again. Uh, we have lots of ways to search them, especially with the four drop searches in this deck. So we're just playing the three. Um, and in this deck, you're probably only ever putting one on board because um, your second backstage slot is very likely just some utility card that you dumped there for an on-play effect. Uh, we have one copy of this level zero Shoko that is a study session. On play, you discard one climax to choose an adolescence character in your waiting room and turn it to hand. Uh, so again, more on-play hand filtering. Uh, this one lets us pitch our climaxes to get waiting room access, uh, which most of the deck doesn't give us a very good uh, waiting room access, so nice to have. Uh, next, we have four copies of Back From Shopping uh, Futaba. This is just a level 0 vanilla. Uh, we're playing it because of the level 1 Sakura, so we'll get there. Uh, we have three copies of the Trial Deck Mai again. Um, this one is still a plusing 0, uh, stock, stock and clock costed. Uh, it's a little better in this deck even though. Um, we do want to get cards into our waiting room early. Uh, our goal is to have at least one copy of the vanilla Futaba in our waiting room by level 1. Uh, so this can help us m uh, move some extra cards and get them there. The Futaba Vanilla is also just a decent... You'll notice we're not playing like runners or anything uh, in this list. Um, and that's because like Futaba is kind of our best turn one play. Uh, we just want to play the Vanilla, and if our opponent's just playing utility characters, they're not going to have a way to beat over 3k, most likely. Uh, if they're just playing like their 2500 power Ricky or 2000 power Ricky or whatever, uh, they won't have a way to beat over her. So she's kind of a plusing zero anyway. Uh, then we have one copy of the promo my. Um, again, it's it gets us some mill to get cards into the waiting room, um, and it can grab us our climax, which a lot of this deck is going to be based around uh, looping our climax combo over and over again. So this lets us get into our climax, and it also lets us get into the event that searches our climax. Uh, then we have two copies of Sunset Sky Rio Futaba. This is a 1045 on play. It gains a level and a thousand. Um, so, uh, 2055, um, kind of relevant, lets us attack into bombs and stuff if our opponent puts any on board, um, and kill them without any real downside. Uh, the other effect is on attack, we choose one of our other adolescence characters, and it gains plus 500 times the number of our other adolescence characters. So on a full board, we're pumping 2000 here. Uh, again, we're almost always using this to pump our level 1 combo. Or to pump our like 103k, because we actually want that guy to live. Uh, next we have um, Petite Devil Kohai Tomoe Koga. So this is our level 1 combo. Uh, on attack, it gains plus 500 times the number of other adolescence characters you have. So it's going to be attacking for 65 on its own, 75 with combo. 
Um, and then plus any boost that we give it, because we do have a lot of ways to pump power. Uh, we want this thing always reversing its battle opponent. Uh, climax combo on it is with the draw trigger. Uh, when battle opponent becomes reversed, if the climax is in play, uh, it gains uh, the following ability until the opponent's turn. When this card is frontal attacked, you may choose one of your other characters and this card and return them to your hand. Uh, so this is sort of like the Aaron combo or like the Astolfo or something where it's returning to hand. Uh, and you get your pluses by like denying reverses and keeping the same character over and over again. Uh, but this one also lets us return another character to our hand. Uh, so that's why we're playing so many on play effects. Because uh, ideally we can do like two Koga combos and then have an on play effect in our center stage as our third attacker and have one in one of our backstage slots uh, that we just played for utility. And then we get to bounce both Kogas, the center stage dude, and the backstage dude, and get all of our effects again on the next turn. Um, so we're just trying to generate a ton of advantage by playing these powerful effects over and over again. And obviously in the process we're denying some number of reverses. Um, your opponent can still get reverses on your non-Koga characters by just attacking them first and then attacking Koga to let you bounce them. Uh, but if they do get the reverse effect and kill your character, you can still bounce your re reversed character back to your hand um, and keep it alive effectively. Uh, so next we have four copies of the uh, Sakura here. He's a 103k. On play from hand, you can choose the uh, level 0 3k Futaba with no effect. You can choose that from your waiting room and put it into your stock. Um, so that's why we're playing so many of these. Uh, they give us free stock over and over and over again. Um, it especially lets us do cool things like we can just we can pl uh, play the Sakura, stock the Futaba, brainstorm for effectively free, uh, and then bounce the Sakura with our combo and then play him again and get the stock back next turn and just keep doing it. Um, so it turns our like brainstorms and drop searches into like costless effects. Uh, if we don't have one of those that we want to be using, we can just use it to build stock. Uh, only downside with building a lot of stock off of these is that you're stocking your Futabas. Um, so the more times you do that, the fewer Futabas you have to keep stocking. Um, but if you don't have anything to be spending your stock on, it doesn't really matter once you run out of Futabas. Because um, at that point you have a ton of stock and you can do cool stuff at level 3. Uh, moving on, we have the uh, anti-change counter once again, just one copy. Uh, just in case we need it. Um, we have one copy of the Shoko early play. Uh, so this is if you have two or fewer climaxes in waiting room, it gets minus one level in your hand. Uh, during your turn, if all your characters are adolescents, it gains 2k, and on play it heals. Uh, so it's similar to the Kaede, in that it's just an on play heal uh, early play. Uh, it's a little tighter on the condition, uh, and it costs two stock, but it's also um, a thousand bigger on defense, and attacks for 11.5, which is a lot bigger than Kaede. Um, it's also green, which we don't have a ton of green in this deck, so we're, we're trying to fix for it a little bit here. Um, and it's also like you can't play multiple Kaides in one turn easily, because you have to have a full board. Uh, but if we have two or fewer Climaxes in Waiting Room, we can play this Shoko to fill one of the slots on our board and enable the Kaide early play. So it lets us get two early plays down in this deck, uh, since we don't have the Sakura to summon Mai. Uh, next we have the Swimsuit Tomoe Koga. So we're just playing one of this. It has a Climax combo, but we're not running the Climax for it. Um, we're mainly playing this for the first effect. On play, you look up to three cards from the top of your deck. You put them back in any order, and then um, you return one of your opponent's characters. You choose up to one of your opponent's characters and return it to their hand. So this lets us deal with a few troublesome things uh, that we might need to be bouncing. Um, mainly stuff like in the mirror, um, if they have the great performance for Taba, we don't really have ways to deal with that, so we want to bounce it back to their hand. Um, some minus soul decks, you can bounce their minus soul characters back to hand so they can't minus soul your guys. Uh, anything that has like a counter that requires five characters on board. Um, so it's just for a little bit of utility like that. Uh, next we have... Oh, it also... The check top three lets us look at our top three cards and see whether we're going to hit on my. Because uh, again, we're, we are playing four copies of the my level three in this deck. And as you can see, not a whole lot of hits on the mill. Obviously, we're going to be stocking our Futabas as often as possible. Um, and probably hoarding a bunch of level 1s in hand. So, ideally, most of our deck is hits. Um, but, Koga looking at top 3. If you look at top 3 and you see a bunch of zeros, you can play the drop searcher, mill them, 
uh, and sort of just keep going uh, and looking at trying to move some more cards uh, out of the way uh, so that you know when Mai is going to hit and then play her. Uh, so again, we have the Kaede's. Um, early play works really well with the Shoko. We've got the four Mai's. This time we don't have any way to recur them. We're just playing them at level three uh, as a finisher because three soul base means we can side for precise damage easily uh, and we get to deal more damage on attack and we might get to deal damage on play. Uh, and then again, one copy of the Mai because we don't have a whole lot of dig for climaxes. We have more in this deck that we're about to see, um, but being able to dig for more pieces uh, is pretty good. It also lets us, if we play the Tomoe, check top three and see three cards we don't want, um, like to mill, it lets us move them out of the way so that our Mai can hopefully mill better uh, afterwards. Uh, next we have two copies of First Love's Reason. So this is an event. Uh, you choose one of your characters and put it into Waiting Room, and then you get to search your deck for a Climax, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Um, so since we are uh, playing a lot of like just random like low power cards um, that aren't actually favorable at attacking a lot of the time, uh, and since we're plus twoing off of our combo, we're probably going to have a lot of just weird cards in hand um, that we don't necessarily want to keep around on the board. Uh, so a lot of times, like if we play the Sakuta um, and stock a Futaba, we can play this, sack the Sakuta off, and go get our climax back. Um, Sakuta, you you often want to keep looping, but if you only have like one Futaba to stock, then you don't need three Sakutas sitting around. Um, so you can sack one if you have too many. Um, any of the like on play check top twos that you might have just been sitting in your backstage anyway, you can just sack them off, go get your climax. <clears throat> it's especially cool with the promo my. You can play the Mai, clock one, check top three. Uh, if you don't see your climax, but you see the event, you can grab the event and then sack the Mai to go get the climax. Uh, so it effectively just turns into on play, clock a card from hand, get a climax out of your deck. Um, it is decompression for us, which isn't great, but looping our combo is what this deck is all about, uh, and this lets us do it a little more consistently. Uh, and then we just have the four comebacks and four draws as our climaxes. Moving into the third deck, uh, this is the one that you've probably seen the most out of like Japan um, and sort of getting the most hype from the set. Uh, this is the standby deck. Um, we are playing not the my level 3 combo this time just because I didn't want 3 decks with my. Uh, but as I said at the beginning, like almost all the combos in this set can go together in any way. Um, so you can play really any of the finishers with any of the level 1 combos. Uh, that's true for all of the decks I've shown. Uh, in this video. Uh, I just put the Mai in the other two because I think it is the most generically powerful level 3 combo in the set. Um, so yeah, moving on to this deck, we have three copies of the Runner because it's a plus and zero. Um, it also mills so it can get our uh, standby targets into the waiting room a little quicker. Uh, one copy of the Sakuta that gives 1500 to our middle position. Uh, it can help our Kaede combo get a reverse uh, since it is a 5500 reverse combo. Uh, in the middle lane at least, uh, and later in the game we can use it to pump our Futaba great performance uh, up by 1500 more, uh, which sometimes is relevant. There are some decks that can actually try to climb uh, above her, and I'll, ta I'll talk about her a little later, but we do want it for that late game utility. Uh, also, it's going to be directing attack direct attacking a lot more often in this deck, uh, since we are a standby deck. We're opening up a lot of slots um, for us to direct attack into, and this lets him pump a bunch of soul. Playing one copy of the Koga Brainstorm, uh, this card's super not necessary, um, but I think it's at least worth acknowledging. Um, it's a clock swap brainstorm, which isn't the best, but it is another plusing brainstorm. Uh, and it has, at the beginning of your climax phase, you can choose one of your adolescence characters and give it a thousand power. Uh, so again, this is a way to pump our level one combo. We really want to be getting reverses with that. Um, and later in the game, if we have our early plays, uh, as you've seen multiple times, like the Kayade early play is not the largest thing in the world. She's just 85 printed. Uh, so pumping a thousand into her can make a difference a lot of the time. Uh, we have three of the drop searchers. Uh, the mill is really important here. We want to be filling our waiting room with standby targets early. Uh, and then the drop search just gives us hand filter and a stock out. Um, we played two copies of Lapless's Demon, Koga. Uh, this one does a lot of work in this deck, because on play you get to look at top two. If they're both clean, you can just attack and make free stock. 
If it's a standby target, you can like play the drop searcher and mill it into your waiting room so you can stand by it. Um, if you see a standby on top, you know you can put it as like the second card instead of the first. So you can attack once, attack, and then summon over the character you already attacked with. Uh, if you see the comeback trigger, you can like brainstorm and go get a card. Uh, it has tons of utility in this deck. Um, it's especially good even like opening up with, uh, so you can just play it and, um, you know, if you see the comeback, you can put it second so that you attack, trigger the clean card, and then cancel. Or if you see the standby, you can like force yourself to trigger it, etc. We play three copies of Self-Loathing Nodoka Toyohama. So this is another plusing zero. Uh, it's beginning of opponent's draw phase. You reveal the top card of your deck, and if it's level one or higher, return this card. You may return this card to your hand. Uh, since we're standby, we're playing a lot of costed character, like a lot of like higher level, higher cost characters. Um, so this is the deck where the Nodoka is most likely to hit. Um, so we're playing that as a another plusing zero that gives us some red color fix, uh, since we don't have a ton of red in this deck, and it is quite important at pretty much every level. Um, so we, we do want to have some red. Then we have, as usual, three copies of the Shoko Brainstorm. This is just the best Brainstorm in the set. Um, it's no different in this deck. And again, we're only playing three because this deck it has so many ways to get it if it wants it. Uh, next we have two copies of the Sunset Sky Shoko Maki no Hara. So this is just a 2k backup. Uh, again, we're a standby deck. We want to be winning on defense. So backups let us do that. Um, I, I would consider a third, maybe. Uh, you do have the comeback triggers to help get it. Your level 1 combo is on reverse uh, salvage. So maybe you need them, maybe you don't. Um, two's been doing fine for me, but I could see a justification for a third. We have one copy of the Sunset Sky Futaba. Um, again, this is pumped power. Uh, it helps us attack into bombs if we are against like Gun Gale or Sunshine or something. And it can pump 2k into our level 1 combo to, again, guarantee reverses. We just have a lot of ways to do that. Uh, and then we have the actual level 1 combo, which is the 1055 Kaede. Cannot side attack. Uh, and when battle opponent becomes reversed, we salvage. Uh, it's a pretty simple combo, not a great combo, but it combos with the standby. Um, and that's sort of this deck's whole thing anyway, is just being a powerful standby sort of toolbox deck. Uh, and when you happen to just have an on reverse salvage combo with your standby you might as well play it uh, and since she's 55 she's not super small and if you get counters you can get her up to like 75 um which is just fine like if you have the sakura your middle lane one is like seven base and can get up to nine uh so we can protect her against some combos uh, and just keep going with her we have three copies of the one one shoko uh, so this deck, unfortunately, does not have access to many great level 1s um, for standby. There is a 1-1-75 with character encore, which is sort of the baseline for standby decks. Uh, but the requirement for it to gain the uh, like 1500 in encore is being experienced 2. Uh, which means that if we standby it out at level 0, we will never be able to have that requirement met. Um, which means it's a 6k, and if our opponent hits level 1 first and gets to combo, uh, there's a chance it can still just get reversed, die, and not have Encore. Um, uh, so it's a little little inconsistent there. Uh, and at the same time, since it's, it's experience 2, we need to be leveling a level 2 or 3, uh, which we are playing a lot of, but we're playing a lot of them at only like 2 copies or so. Um, and we would much rather not be leveling something that we need as a uh, part of our game plan. Um, like, we can't really level the Futaba, even though we're playing two, because um, we definitely want to be able to see that one copy 100% of the time, or almost 100% of the time. We don't want to level one of our two Kogas, because we like to see both, and we definitely have to see one. Um, can't really level the only Shoko, uh, etc. So it, it gets a little weird with trying to find something to level for that one. Uh, so we're just playing this instead. Uh, there is also a 118k. Uh, it's a 1 6000 that gains plus 500 for each other character out of the trial deck. That one's fine. Um, I've just chosen this one because Eren and Chica can still reverse the 1 1 8k. Um, they can't reverse this. Uh, so 
it's not going to be winning on offense as much or defense, but it will block reverses. Um, and that's kind of fine uh, in the meta right now. It's about all we really need to be doing. Um, we've got the 2-2 two -two Koga to win us like every lane in existence. Uh, so we have, again, one anti-change counter. In this deck, we are definitely making use of the anti-change counter and can definitely consider playing a second copy uh, since we are filling the board with a ton of high-level characters that are very difficult for our opponent to side into. Um, a lot of times, if they play early plays, they're going to have to frontal attack just to do anything. Uh, and that opens them up to getting uh, even two for one a lot of the time on the anti-change counter. Uh, so next we have uh, the 2-2 Mind Reader Tomoe Koga. It's a pretty simple one. It's just a 7k, gains 1,000 for each other adolescence character. Uh, so that's going to put it at 11,000 print or like base power. Um, and you can get that out at level 1 as an 11k, which is going to win against pretty much every lane ever. Um, and then once we move into level 2, we can stamp out an assist that puts it up to 13. Um, and it just sort of steamrolls from there. Card is super good, uh, and one of the best cards in the deck for sure, uh, with the way the game plan works out. Uh, we're playing one of the early play Shokos, uh, just like in the other deck. Uh, it lets us get the um, sort of double early play thing with Kaede going on. Um, it's even better in this deck because we do have the uh, Koga assist to make it 11-5 on defense, 13-5 on offense. It's just a ton of power. It's actually killing a lot of early plays. Um, instead of just, like, dying to counters, I guess. Most early plays aren't going to be, like, 13 on defense inherently. You're still probably struggling with counters, but you're at least forcing them. The... and it heals, which is just great. Uh, we play two copies of the 3-2 Futaba. So this card is a potential standby target, mainly our level 3 game plan. Sort of the defining card of the set. Uh, or at least of this build. So if it's in the middle position of your center stage, it gains 4,000 power, so it becomes a 12-5. If you're level 3 or higher, it gains great performance, which forces all of your opponent's attacks to be frontal attacks directed at her if she's in the middle position of your center stage and not reversed. And then uh, auto, pay 1, discard 1, when battle opponent becomes reversed, deal 1 damage. And that's active during both players' turns. So she's a 12-5 that forces your opponent to attack into her and gets to burn when she kills something. We're playing the Koga assist, so with one assist she's actually a 14-5, two assists she's a 16-5. We're also playing the Sakura level 0 that gives 1500 to the only position of the stage that she's ever going to be in. And we're playing backups, so the goal is just make her unkillable and watch your opponent crash into her every turn. A lot of the times you kill your opponent, you'll either deal a bunch of damage to them, not quite kill them, and they'll have to crash into her and die on their own turn. Or they play a bunch of healers, they're at 3-0, you get to burn them up to like 3-2 or 3-3 on their turn, and then you only have to deal 4 damage to win the game instead of 7, right? Uh, and even if you don't deal the 4 damage, and they live at like 3-6 again, you can probably burn them out on their turn, uh, since... They've already spent their heals, most likely. Play four copies of Sunset Sky Kaede. Card is impossibly easy to early play in this deck, and its power isn't actually pathetic when it has a 2k assist behind it. Still not great, it's a 10-5, but that's better than what it was before. Uh, and it heals, and a lot of times it's one stock, which is what we like to see in this deck. It's also red. So, you're leveling this card a lot in this deck, because you need red at level 1. Uh, so there, there is a justification, maybe, for playing the Experience 275 uh, in this deck, since you are so often leveling one of the four Kaede level 3s, but I don't think relying on being able to level that to get your 1-1 one -one is quite consistent enough, because uh, there are games where you're going to have to like level the 0 or... Um, clock into red on your next turn and not have leveled it, or something like that. Uh, next we have three copies of the level 3 Nodoka. So we're playing this instead of the my level 3 uh, as our top end in the stack. It works alongside the uh, great performance Futaba a little better, I think, uh, as like a follow-up on the Futaba turn. So it's on play, you draw one, discard one, and return one of your opponent's characters to their hand. 
Um, you can you can use this to sort of open up a way for the Futaba. Uh, if playing her down puts her in a lane where like she could get countered over or something, uh, you can just return it to hand to your opponent's hand and not have to worry about it. Um, though generally, like Futaba is just as big on offense as she is on defense. Uh, you can also use this to uh, again stop people from having like uh, counters that need a lot of characters on board. Um, you can stop minus soul stuff like that. And you can stop your opponent's Futaba in the mirror match. Uh, and the climax combo here is on attack. If the comeback is in play, pay one, discard one. Look at up to four cards from the top of your opponent's deck. You choose up to four, put them in waiting room, return the rest of the deck, shuffle, and this gains a thousand. So I like this a lot as a follow up uh, to Futaba because you probably won every land on defense the turn that you played Futaba, uh, which means you're direct attacking. Since you have level 3s, you're direct attacking for 3 soul, which is already a... It's not terrible, but it's about as high as you want to go. Um, but this lets us play the Climax, go up to 4, which is scary, but large. Not super likely to stick. But hey, the combo lets us rip Climaxes out of our opponent's top 4, which makes our 4 more likely to go in. Uh, and at that point, like if you've burned your opponent on their turn, a single 4 going in is all it takes to win the game. So if you can rip some climaxes out and just stick one of these fours, you pretty much immediately won the game in one attack. Uh, so it's just a lot of cool, cool, powerful stuff there. Then we have two copies of the uh, Koga assist. So this is assist. Your characters in front of this gain 2,000 power. Ideally, we are standbying this out at level two uh, to just pump our two twos into oblivion and our early plays. On play, discard one, heal to stock. Uh, so if we ever play the second copy at level 3, uh, which we often do, we get to heal to stock, uh, which is just really good. Makes it a one-cost one, one cost assist and heals us. And then uh, if both players are level 3 or higher, you can pay 5, both players heal 4. So you're usually using this, uh, say like you hit your opponent to like 3-1 or 3-2, they heal back down to 3-0 and hit you up to like 3-3. Three, three. Uh, you can just go like, okay, clock draw two, pay five, both of us heal four, so I go back from three four to three zero, and your opponent goes from three zero to three zero. You get a lot more value out of that, and paying five to just heal four in that case is really good value. Basically any time that one of your like turn cycles where you don't get to finish your opponent fails, uh, you can just use this to reset and try again. Especially since you do have such a good two turn kill if you can just keep resetting to where you go for the two turn kill uh, eventually you're going to get it you don't have enough stock to do this like multiple times but getting two attempts at top end if the first one doesn't work is really powerful and then we have the comebacks and the standbys so uh, this text is really nice uh, lots of just high power cards you're winning board a lot of the time especially with the 2-2 Koga uh, and you just have a nice like toolboxy suite of cards uh, you get to look at top a lot, you get to drop search a lot, you get to brainstorm and just hold whatever the hell you want. Um, good stuff, really good stuff. Oop, we went the wrong direction there. Alright, so thank you guys for watching. Um, those are the three decks I've got. Again, there are a ton of ways to build this set. Pretty much every combo can go with every other combo, um, and you don't have any like bad side effects from it. So there's a lot, of, a lot of creative room for the deck. Uh, those are just sort of the three that I think you'll probably see the most often, um, or at least sort of shells that you'll see the most often. Uh, so I wanted to show those off more than anything. So yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time.